asked in 2016, 2017 to do an investigation and report on um, the situation at that time uh, under Coco Palms Ventures LLC that was you know, the, the situation at that time. At that time, there were a number of cultural practitioners of the area who had returned to the lands and were actively restoring it, some of whom are here and some, some of whom were younger people. Um, uh, what we documented was that there were, in fact, um, Holoa um, uh, and a whole number of of native birds, including Aeo, Koloa, uh, Nene, um, and a, a number of different birds that had returned since they had become begun doing the restoration work that they had been doing. So um, those and those birds were compatible with the activities that were taking place at that time. Um, also. The canal that was in question was being restored at that time by the community, by the cultural practitioners who were hauling trash out of the canal um, by hand and in a small donkey boat. Uh, they were pulling out tons and tons of, um, of trash from the canal to help the waterway to recover. And I do want to note that because it has been erroneously um, said that, you know, they deposited trash there when in fact what happened was they were pulling out the trash, restoring the waterway, and then hauling that trash out and were blocked and therefore they were not able to um, remove 100% of what they had pulled out of the canal. So I just want to clear that part. Um, up. Uh, there are a number of burials that they were maintaining the sites for uh, at that time. I have not been um, back recently, but uh, there were definitely a number of known burials. They were doing ceremony and um, and, and maintaining those. I do want to note that it's very unclear about the difference between Coco Palms Ventures LLC that was in place at that time um, and the existing assignees of the of the permit. And it I think it's necessary for me to note that um, at that time, there were a number of very, very concerning things that are happening, were happening at that time. I cannot say that they are happening now, but they were of such incredible concern that I think they need to be noted for the record. Um, some of them, you know, for our peace project, a lot of times we will work with landlords or whoever the case may be in order to try to build peace. However, in this case, uh, we're excluded when there's actual violence and there was actual violence. There were people coming in with guns, shooting guns into the areas where the cultural practitioners were. There were off-duty policemen coming in patrol cars to um, come to the areas and basically harassed the cultural practitioners for being there, saying that they were illegal. You know, it was a very, it was a dispute at the time, but you know, there were um, a number of things not acting on behalf of KPD, but acting on behalf of private entities who, as it turned out, were hired by Coco Palms uh, Ventures LLC. So, um, and we did document that. Uh, there were also, um, I think that it's it's important to know that I don't know what the status are, is of the um, EB-5 um, investors who were brought in at that time for approximately, and they were very well documented, for approximately $500,000 each. And this is where the money for that original venture was coming in. These are, this was a specific program under the Department of Homeland Security, I believe, that was um, that was bringing in um, basically investors who would technically work in the place and they were, I mean, these investments were like $500,000. And there were 172 of them who had invested in this. And the idea was that they were to, they had paid 
money already. I don't know that 100% of them had, but they had, and that was the money that was being used. The, these investors um, would get a green card under the rules uh, and be able to move into the area. So there was great concern about the impact to the community from a large quantity of wealthy foreign investors coming into that area of Wailua. Of Wailua. So anyway, the, you know, I think that those things are, are very important to consider. And also one, one final thing that I, I think in the historic record um, needs to be remembered is that the way that, and this is primarily for the private parcels, but it also applies to the, um, to the state parcels, that in 1893, the very first court decision of the provisional government that had, you know, uh, taken over at that point illegally. Yeah. So at that point, it was not recognized. So I think this is important because the very first court decision of the provisional government was by Sanford B. Dole himself, who was an attorney um, who had been an attorney over these parcels that are in question earlier. Um, and as the president of the provisional government, the brand new. It's, yes, 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 I'm sorry. I, this is my last point, but he stepped down from his position as president of the. Um, provisional government in order to specifically um, in order to be serve as the the justice of the Supreme Court of the provisional government and made that determination which is where all of the the land titles go back to so I, I think that it's cloudy to say the least it's very complicated and cloudy um, and I think that that history needs to be remembered in this because it's going to come up um, a a revocable permit is called revocable because it should be revocable. And in this case, the cleanest thing that this board can do is to revoke that permit and then, um, you know, and then take it from there. So thank you so much for your time and thank you very much. mahalo.